Hello, Mark. Hi. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Where are you in America? I, I am in the northwest corner of the United States. So uh, if you know the U.S. at all, I am north of Los Angeles in a place called Seattle. Ew. <laughs> what? I hear things. Uh, I, I'm I'm hearing things are uh, tough in Seattle. Uh, it, it well, it. I'm I'm not in downtown Seattle. I am on an island to the northwest of Seattle. So yeah, yeah. Well, Seattle's gone through some hard times, definitely. Uh, yeah. But I'm I'm okay. I'm on an island somewhere. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, you're protected by 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 the sea. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's water. I might as well be, I'll use a comparison. I might as well be on Santorini. I I bet you're better connected on Santorini with the mainland. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> and yeah. And and I I I dare to say that I bet your island is a bit less beautiful than Santorini. <laughs> yes, I, I fell in love with that. There was a movie that came out years ago and i know you're probably not old enough to remember it uh called summer lovers which was sh with daryl hannah and one of her early films and it was shot in santorini and i remember watching it on an on like an older television and you know we don't have that sort of weather here <laughs> so well, i was it watching can't be that old with uh, daryl hannah what it was it in from the 90s no it was early 80s Early How years. is it called? Uh, what's it called? It's called Summer Lovers. Yeah. yeah. Summer Lovers. Oh yeah, check it out. I mean, it, and it's a. I mean, it might as well be a board of tourism promo for uh for Santorini, and and it's like it's going. This is the most beautiful, you know, because it's just you know, beautiful sky and ocean and you know all the white of Santorini. All the buildings were white. I was going, what is this place? <laughs> it's so cool. It's a it's volcano. Like, a volcano. I did not know that. Yes, it's a, it's an active volcano, and the caldera where the um, the city is built. It's a, you know the edge of uh, the volcano. The rest of the island was sunk due to an eruption like ah. years ago. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, check it out. Get a chance. I'll I'll, I'll in fact I'll I look will. it up real fast. It um let me see what what year was. Uh, what year was Summer Lovers movie? It was 1982 when that came okay. out. Peter Gallagher, Daryl Hannah, and Valerie Quinnison, the late Valerie Quinnison. She died in a car crash some some years ago. But yeah, film that. location. The entire thing was shot in Santorini. So there you go. Okay. Trivia. I'm a big sure. pop culture guy, so. <laughs> I do have a, a question about uh, volcanoes, but I think I'll ask it them um, later. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, um, Mark, I I have posted your um, director's uh, cut. You know the the Flat Earth Secrets uh, documentary. Yeah. Clues. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Clues. That's alright. Uh, they're hiding. Yeah. They're hiding God. And um, I was thinking so that there is some sort of a structure to, to our conversation. Maybe I can go through that uh, documentary and ask, you know, the questions that um, came up while I was watching. Oh, yeah. How yeah, absolutely. That? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Not, not, not just the questions, also, you know, comments and general ideas. So um, you you relate um um you relate um the film industry and uh, Hollywood with um uh, how they're hiding uh, flat Earth, which I found um a very interesting notion, mm -hmm. the fact that they will release a movie and then they will after 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 that movie has you know sat in our yep. minds, right. then they will do whatever they they want to do, right. Yeah, did, did I get that? Um, yeah, you did. That, that, you did. That um, there's yeah. uh, the the biggest, the most glaring example of that would be Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Uh, yeah. And what they were doing was they were preying on human beings, what we call suspension of disbelief. 
Meaning when you watch a movie or a television or even a book, why do you get emotional? For example, I mean, especially with movies. I mean, you're sitting there, if you're in the theater, the perfect example, or at home, it's like, you know, you're watching an image. One, you know it's an image, right? It's it's not it's not happening live. You know the actors, you know they've been in different films, you know that thousands of people have worked on this movie. And yet you're, you know, you might be, you know, tearing up or, or you know, getting angry or, or sad or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and it's because human beings want to believe. We're by default. We want to believe what we see, and it's called suspension of disbelief, meaning we just ignore everything else around us. It's like, no, we are invested in this story, and if it's done well enough, it really, really impacts us. You know, I remember, oh, good Lord, years ago when uh, Titanic came out, and there was this group of girls in, in, in front of me, like a group of five that were watching the movie, and when the house lights came up at the end of the show, one of them could not get out of her chair. She was so upset <laughs> about the DiCaprio dying at the end. She they could not get her out of her chair. I'm thinking they're gonna have to bring an ambulance in here. So you do that with something like 2001: A Space Odyssey, which was easily the best film of the year, even though it did not win Best Picture. Uh, it was it was nominated for a whole bunch of stuff, but it was so groundbreaking that it filled in all the gaps subliminally to the Apollo, the American moon missions, which were just a year later. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, because people, and we, we're still doing it to this day. We release space movies every single year, uh, and not by yes. accident, so. Yes. And what's up with Tom Hanks? Because he seems to be Tom Hanks. Oh yeah, Tom Hanks. He seems, he, there's something with him, because with every big, um, is your conspiracy? He, he he's filming a, a movie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what's up not, with that? Well, it's not a big secret, uh, and yet it is. It, we we just don't like to talk about it here. Which is when when you have an intelligence agency like a spy agency, we'll just pick on the CIA. It's a great one. I mean, we've got the FBI and the CIA and NSA and naval intelligence and alphabet groups no one's even heard of. But we'll just take CIA. You want to, not only do you want to control most of the media companies, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that. I mean, and the, you, you, you contact these companies when, one, you help promote them. And when they get to a certain level, you make sure that you have access to all their data. You, you, cut, you say, you know, under national security, you're going to sign the disclosure. We have backdoor access to everything and you can't talk about it. That's just the way it goes. And then a smaller sense, you need actors, certain actors to be in your camp. And so you approach these actors and, and you say, you know, under the guise of patriotism, you know, national, you know, nationalism, uh, you know, would you be willing to, you know, help us out, you know, in, in different projects? And, and it's, it's happened forever. Absolutely happened forever. And uh, Tom Hanks, yes, absolutely seems to be one of those guys. That uh, even going back to, you know, he helped produce uh, the, the the television series from the Earth to the Moon. Uh, he is, in fact, there was a there was a there was a joke in, an, you know, we have an animated show here called The Simpsons. And there is this joke that he had in it where he was on screen and he goes, the government's lost some of its credibility lately. So they're going to borrow some of mine. <laughs> and it's like, oh, OK, <laughs> nice, nice little wink at the camera there. So yeah, yeah, and he's not alone. I'm sure there are other actors that have that have done it, and and they're recruited by by numerous governments. I mean, you want you you know the whoever's the most influential actors in your particular group, you you would like them, you be able to use them for certain things. Uh, you know, sometimes it's film, sometimes it's actors. I mean, like the original Top Gun, for example, was one of the greatest recruiting tools for the United States Navy ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we, and whenever we, the, we have a trend here, not to, not to go off into the weeds, but, uh, when we're engaged in some sort of military conflict, we will release more war movies that year to sort of, you know, normalize it. It's like, oh yeah. War pump up the, and pump up the, you know, the. Yeah, the rhetoric. The like emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other countries see that. Let me let me end with this. There was a um. There's a band in Europe, a German band called Rammstein or Rammstein, however yeah. you pronounce it. Rock yeah, band. Yeah. Rammstein. They they made this fantastic song 
called We're All Living in America, where they were basically saying <laughs> that America's media, it's different from the Roman Empire, where the Roman Empire threw force, you know, the boots on the ground. With America, we spread our brand everywhere. And man, it's like, oh, it's cool to be American. It's cool to be American. But he made, there's this one line in the song, which I think just summed it up so well. He goes, it's Coca-Cola and sometimes war. And it's like, it was perfect. Absolute perfect. Because that's what it is. I mean, we, we are, it's like, oh yeah, drink Coca-Cola. Oh yeah, we may invade you one day. Just be sure, be aware of that. <laughs> so, yeah. if you have something So, you so want, you're saying that, yeah, so you're saying that these actors... They're not in on it. They're, you know, useful idiots, let's say. Well, yeah, there's there's some, you've heard of the term need to know, right? You know, yeah. it, which, and it's done in the military and it's done in the spy game a lot, uh, which is compartmentalization. Um, treat them no differently than assassins, right? You've seen the assassin movies. It's like the you know, the guy gets a folder. It's like, okay, you're going to sit in this hotel window and here's your rifle and you're going to shoot that guy that's getting into a limousine. Yeah. And that's you have all. no idea why. Nope. Mm -hmm. You have no. And why would you? Why would you tell him? It's like he, he doesn't need to know the backstory. You know, the movie will fill you in the backstory. This guy knows nothing, right? So. And we did this. So, yes, actors do that no different now than um, the current astronauts that are up there. So back in the day, I firmly believe that the original Apollo astronauts were not only told, oh, yeah, you're going to fake it, but here's why you're faking it. Right. And it weighed on them so heavily. It's a, that's a that's a tough load to, to, to bear yeah, yeah. emotionally. And it, these guys cracked. I mean, they they crawled into bottles. They didn't do press conferences. It was like, oh, I don't want to. Because they felt really guilty. These guys were Boy Scouts, you know, real go-getter Americans. And they were told, oh, yeah, by the way, you're like you said, you're just going to be useful idiots right now. But you're going to get all the credit for it. And people, it's funny, people, as much as there's a lot of egocentrism out there, there's a lot of people that feel guilty getting credit for things they didn't do. Right. You know, you just it kind of wears on you. I mean, these guys had schools named after them and huge parades. I mean, how many parades can you go down? It's like, wow, you're so great. And, and, you know, in the back of your head, I did absolutely nothing. So the new astronauts are treated like spies where they are. They, they are told, OK, you're going to fake this. You don't get to ask why it's above your pay grade. It's above, you know, you you are it's above your clearance to even ask why. So just do it. You know, it's like, okay, you're going to, you know, here's your soundstage. You're going to you pretend you're in space and then you're going to get paid and go home and who cares? And it actually worked out pretty well because their, their conscience is mostly clean. You know, it's, we have this denial inside us. It's like until, until somebody says something, you know, until somebody has the, the debriefing folder, you know, you know, part of you, it's like, well, it's probably not what I'm thinking, you know, until somebody confirms it for you. It's kind of like the, the jilted lover thing uh over here which is your spouse isn't cheating on you until you have the evidence you know what i mean you have that that nagging yeah, yeah. thing in the back of your head it's mm -hmm. like yeah no he wouldn't dare you know then the private investigator it's like oh no here's the photographs and it's like ah then you freak out yeah <laughs> oh. okay um all right then you go on and um you give this example with um the mice that they would go explore um the, the borders of uh, their cage yeah. and then you know each creature in uh, the animal kingdom will do the same thing and then you say well humans humans they cannot let go if if they find a border they they will not let go yeah. they will you know nag them okay and then please explain again what do you mean that the the bigger the the enclosure the the easier the easier it is to no not to manage um the population so it's reverse oh, yeah. so once the enclosure is big enough but so I, part of this i stole from the original matrix movie which was there was this wonderful line in there where um the age agent smith says that every mammal in this world develops its own equilibrium with the surrounding environment right Yes. But human beings do not. They're the only, They're the only, viruses. yeah, they are viruses. It really uh, can't be described as really anything else. 
but when it came to the size, I, I noticed when I was doing a thought experiment on what, when you started building a bigger and bigger enclosure, what started happening, which was not only could you fit more and more people into it, but eventually you realize that as long as they didn't find the outer barrier, within a generation, nobody would be lying. Meaning with the Truman Show, it, Truman Show was fascinating as a concept, but I impractical, you know, which was you have everybody's actors except for one guy, right? Yeah. But if you made the enclosure big enough, you could, one, you could put a whole bunch more people that aren't actors. And then after a while, you don't need any more actors. Because, which I, why I use the um, the wonderful M. Night Shyamalan movie, as far as what, what I'm concerned, some people didn't like it, but called um, uh, uh, the, oh crap, I just lost my train of thought, M. Night Shyamalan, The Village. So The Village, if you've ever seen it, uh, which is just fascinating concept, which was you told people there's an outer barrier, but there's mo it's woods and there's monsters in the woods. And yeah. what they realized was once the parents died, no one in that village would be lying. Everyone would be, you know, be like, oh, no, that's just the way it is. I mean, they could all pass lie detector tests. And that could be applied to, to a place like this. You know, you, you create a, a, a structure large enough. You don't even really need actors to start. All you need to do is create the legends, the myths, and the humanity fills in the blanks. And it's, and it's worked very, very well. The only thing you have to make sure is to delay them finding the any sort of boundaries the fence as i as i called it as long as as long as possible and in our case eh, it's roughly 5000 years 4500 5 5000 5, years give or take meaning meaning we found we figured it out we didn't figure it out until we had the technology to figure it out so if you were the let's say the the king of france in the 1500s right and someone actually gave you a snow globe and said, oh, yeah, or the, the old, the ancient maps. Said, oh, yeah, this is where you live. What could you do with that? Almost nothing, because you have wooden chips and you have horses. I mean, and that technology did not change for long, long periods of time. When the when we started building gasoline engines, that's when everything changed. Because you could, you could build um, very fast ships, uh, powerful tractors, uh, and planes. That was the big thing, airplanes. So once you have that, then things start speeding up rapidly. And then the governments, the military sp specifically starts looking, you know, they've heard the rumors. They start looking for the edge of the world. And let's say they find it in 1960. Well, then you've got some decisions to deal with, which is, okay, do you tell the population? And if you don't, how do you keep this thing a secret? I don't know if that was your original question, but I don't know if that's where I went. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it was. Um. What's what I find confusing with um, this uh, line of uh, thought is that my, this this metaphor is it's as if humans build the um, the dome. Well, yeah, that's just it, and I I try to clarify every chance I get, which is we us you and me and and our relatives we had nothing to do with this place. Um, it is a line, I, I know I use a lot of pop culture references, but I think it's relevant. Um, there's a line from the movie Contact where she asks them, you know, when she finally gets there, you know, I, you know this, and she goes, you know, did you build the transit system? You know, the, the thing that got, and, and there was one of the most humbling moments because, you know, this, this advanced alien said, oh, we didn't build it. <laughs> we don't know who did. It was zero when we got here. Sort of like where we are now, which is we didn't build this place. We had nothing to do with the building of this place. Not only that, there's huge amounts of evidence that we aren't even the first civilization to live here. Not by a long stretch. You know, our unbroken civilization goes back 5,000 years. But then you look at ruins, you know, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, Pumapunku, Machu Picchu, Bimini Road, the Bosnian pyramids, not to mention the real pyramids. <laughs> the Egyptians had nothing to do with that. And you, you see all those things and you realize we're not the first people to rent this apartment. And then it's like, okay, then it just opens up a whole nother thing. Because why would you? I mean, you why would this be a one-off, you know, just for us? And not only that, why would there only be one of these structures? There's probably a whole bunch of structures out there in different stages of development. Sort of help, kind of. What do you mean? 
different structures uh, in development. Oh, so different if, domes, you mean? What, what yeah, do you yeah, mean? yeah. If why why would there just be one dome? Uh, if you if we're talking about uh, advanced civilizations that are orders of magnitude above us. You wouldn't just set, you know, there wouldn't be just one dome. You could have a whole series of domes. There could be hundreds of these things out there, if not thousands. It's hard to say, but why Why would you have just one? You know, and what's outside of that? Well, we can talk about that later. But uh, for me, it, it, everything, the design of this place, lend, it, it seems to lean towards that this is all, this is a constantly, constant work in progress. And if we're a work in progress, well, then there's got to be others in different stages of progress, you know, pre, pre-industrial, post-industrial, you know, and, and the stories, even, even the, the myths and legends going back a long time. I mean, heck, the, um, the, one of the, the, the first parts of Genesis, right, in, you know, in the, in the Christian religion is the, the story of the Tower of Babel, which has nothing to do with us, by the way. This Tower of Babel, which I used in the clues, fascinating. Which is, yes. oh yeah, one of the early civilizations was totally unified and perfect, and they didn't last very long because the first thing they did was, yeah, where the heck are we? Yeah, we're getting out that way. <laughs> you start building a ladder straight up, and whoever you know built this place, looking down, going, oh, this is not going to work out. we got to make some changes right now. And that was the end. That was the end of the Babylonian civilization. They were, they were scattered, and, and they you know, started over, so... Yeah, I was um, going to ask um, a bit later, but let's um, let's clear this um, now. Yeah. So, humans, are yes. we are we still talking about humans? When we're talking Back in about Babel with with uh, yeah yeah Babel hu- Tower? yeah human humanoid. I mean, I would I would I say that they're, you know, we have to make it in terms of how we classify things. So, Homo sapiens. Eh, let's just say humanoid, you know, a couple arms, couple legs, you know, how, how they look exactly. I don't know. You know, were they taller? Were they shorter? Hard to say, but they were extremely smart and not very um, divided at all. You know, everyone, everyone sit from, again, the short passages, everyone would have to have been on the same page, which was, you know, everyone, everyone around. It's like, oh yeah, we're all joining together, build a ladder. Let's see what we can do. Uh, we could never pull that off here. We uh, and uh, probably for a reason. You know, I think we're divided for a particular purpose. That help? My, my, yes, sort of. Uh, my, I'm still confused. Hmm. The dome. The dome was built by different creatures, or the dome was built. Oh, you know, okay, it's, okay, it's okay. God's design. You that's know, what, well, what's going on <laughs> okay okay yeah. so who built no it's a, that's a great question who built this place okay yes. you can only go down one of two paths which is an older civilization that's much more powerful uh, than ourselves right or the divine but really when you get to that level you're splitting hairs because one man's advanced technology is another man's deity you know, uh, you know, back back, you you could take you know a, a super you know one of these common cell phones, take it back a couple hundred years, and you'd probably be burned at the stake for witchcraft, right? But when it comes to us, what whoever built this, let, let's let's take it another way. Let's say the builders of this place decided to land in a big golden spaceship in in Paris, right? Two, one of two things would happen, or both things would happen. What, there'd be a group of people that would show up and say, you know, just be matter of fact, you know, the, the science people, like, oh, wow, they do look like the people from Avatar, you know, eight foot tall blue people. And there'd be another group that would immediately come in. It's like, we must start a church for the blue people, you know, and then, church, you know, a whole new religion would be built, you know, which is why the prime directive of Star Trek was so fascinating because it was absolutely right. Uh, even even in our civilization right now, if an advanced civil if advanced tech showed up, you would have some people that would worship them and other people that would want to know their secrets. So yeah, whoever built this place, very very you know they got engineering skills that are way beyond ours, far far beyond ours. I can I can understand that argument if we're talking about you know more um, ancient civilizations. Um, 
who they believed in, you know, multiple deities, the ancient Greeks, for example. Sure. They had 12 gods. They had, you know, the Titans. They had... Now, when we're talking about monotheistic, um, you know, religions like yeah. Christianity, it's one God. It's it's not even... It, it doesn't even have mother, you know. It's, it's a divine, I don't know, energy. Right. So we are not talking about a different civilization or aliens or or it, it, it's not the same god right. or you know a different civilization a more advanced civilization that primitive people would call them gods right like maybe they used to i don't know right. but today it's different when we say god built this place or a different civilization built this place right. more advanced okay Do, you, no no you're absolutely right and that's a good point to make because it, we would there are some people do okay do i think that the highest form of god right built this place not necessarily um but whoever built whoever built this place is one step closer to knowing god's phone number than we are so they you know because <laughs> we are you know what they yeah we have i mean we have engineering skills now that you could go back a couple hundred years and there would be people that would be worshiping our t our civilization so I'm I'm kind of a believer that there are super, you know, administrators that that watch over, you know, domes, you know, something like this. And then mm -hmm. God at the highest level, well, he kind of looks over the administrators and whom how many layers there are, who knows? You know, I, I try, you know, try to only live one world at a time, but uh it's 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 a it, it's it's a deep mystery for a reason. You know, we're I think we were deliberately kept in the dark and it's a big learning process and you know, we're, we're making our way there. We'll see how close we get. So uh, do you believe there's. Do you believe in space in, um, you know, uh, not the space that is defined to us by mainstream science? So do uh, I you know, me, meaning so. And and by that I say that everything in the sky on the ground fairly easy to define because we're down here, but since most people don't have flying cars, and I mean ninety nine point nine percent people don't have flying cars, I think everything on the sky is no different than a planetarium. You know, it, it's just lights on a sky. You know, some bigger, some smaller, some can do things, some can't. Uh, as far as these incredibly vast distances that are out there in the empty parts of space, no. No, I don't. Even Carl Sagan, who was, you know, one of our guys from back in the day, he had a great quote. He goes, space really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's so much of it and it's so empty. He goes, it just seems so inefficient. There's just these massive tracks where it's not like there's, you know, a few things. There's nothing there. And not even, I mean, what we're breathing in right now, we're, we're in an invisible fog, an invisible cloud that we're talking in right now. Space doesn't even have that. So no, no, I don't. Um, do I? Do I? The, the, there are planets, sure, but they're just lights in the sky. Can we land on them? No. Why? And yeah. that goes along with the illusion. If ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine percent of the people believe the illusion, then that's all you need. Whoever whoever built this place, and and that has worked very very well because it's like, oh yeah, look, there's the moon, and you can you can define the moon all you want, and if you're the powers that be, it's like, oh yeah, we landed on it. I mean, the Americans mm. just brilliant Out, outside of our country for example i ask this of people you know all over the, of the world which is i say yeah i know why the americans believe that we went to a moon because that's what we do right why do you believe in it and everyone tells me the same thing which is oh it was on television it's like really because <laughs> we thought the americans would never lie ever about anything ever 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 that's what we do we lie all the time about everything so why would we, and you know people I remember this girl in Ireland and and I said I go you realize even we haven't been there since 1972 right even if if you believe that story I go when are we going back right and she looks mm -hmm. at me with just these innocent eyes and she goes soon we're going back soon I go uh huh <laughs> every day now <laughs> yeah yeah every president in the United States 
since Reagan has said that in every term. And they we've got wonderful compilations like, oh, we're going back to the moon. We're going back to the moon. No one's ever going back to the moon. That Artemis, you know, we've got a rocket on the pad right now. It's been delayed twice. It's not even we're not even gonna re you know, look at it again until October. We're not going anywhere. Ugh. Anyway, sorry. Well we don't we don't bother with the moon now. Now we we have set uh, our eyes our eyes uh, to Mars. Now Mars. Yeah. Is there. <laughs> yeah, Mars. Mars. Even if even if Mars was possible, again, we put some movies out there. We've got, you know, Red Planet and and uh um The Martian. The Martian, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been a number of Mars movies out there over the years. But yeah. they they gloss over the technology that would be needed to do it. Don't have the fuel. It's a one-way trip. Even if you got the fuel and actually landed on the damn thing, you're not leaving there. If the, Even that was possible. You don't have enough supplies. And, again, wh there's no – what's the motivation to go to Mars in the first place? You know, unless there's some resources that we want, that's really all our motivation has ever been something we need resources. If they, there's resources there, yes, we'll have to. I mean, if the moon was made out of a special mineral that we needed for fuel, oh, we'd be going there all the time if it was real. But no, Mars, not Mars. It's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. Oh, Mars. All right. Then, uh, Mark, um, at uh, another point, uh, in your documentary, you say that um, if people knew the truth, yeah. then our world would be better. We would be kinder to one another. You know, we, our world would be better. I was being somewhat optimistic, but there would be some birthing pains if that happened. Yeah, I understand that. But before we go to the birthing uh, pains, yeah, uh, my question is, well, the ancient civilizations that they knew that they were living on a flat plain and they were there was a dome um, right. above them. Right. They were still corrupt. They were still going to war. They were still nasty. You know, they disappeared. They destroyed themselves. They did. They <laughs> so did. Why? Why now? If we find out the same thing that they knew, this time will be better. Okay, I have a. <laughs> That that term, when I say things will be better, it is not meant to be like a storybook ending where all stories, including the Bible, by the way, you know, and they lived happily ever after. It's a nice thing to say in print, but in reality, time passes and things change and then eventually, you know, it becomes cyclical. Something something happens. Human beings, for whatever reason, cannot be content too long before they start screwing it up. I can't speak for the ancient civilizations. I don't know what happened at Machu Picchu or Puma Punku or, you know, what happened to Atlantis. Who knows what was going on with there? You know, maybe, maybe the, you know, whoever built this place decided to throw in a few things after a while. It's like, yeah, they're boring. <laughs> get, get, let's let's inter introduce some trouble. Who knows? With us, it was, it, it kind of, goes back to the uh, Ronald Reagan speech that he did to the UN back in the late 80s, where for at least a while anyway, I don't know what it, long term, hard to say, if it, his speech said if, if there were an eight, something outside our world entered, right, that wasn't us, human beings would unify. And that part, that part I actually do believe in. Um, it kind of goes back to the, the, something I talked about, the Scottish Highlands, which is the clans of the Scottish Highlands. Oh, yeah, they'll beat each other all day long until the British show up on the field. Then it's like, okay, everybody this way, <laughs> right? Yes. Same thing would happen on a macro scale, which is you could literally have, and I think we've actually done this in some sci-fi movies, some lesser ones, where is that you could have soldiers fighting yes. on the field, and if something showed up in the sky, everyone just turn and be like, so what do we do with this thing, right? And that, and we would unify at least for a while. I long term, hard to say. Um, but the powers that be, and let's just say it wasn't even something in the sky. Let was let's just say it was, uh, you know, the fact that we're living in a building, right? The powers that be now, men, <laughs> women get a pass on this, but men are notorious for never giving up power willingly. <laughs> they always have to have it ripped from them. 
And with governments, do not forget that the government has a really hard time. It's, it goes against one of the rules of power, which is you can't be the ultimate power if there's something above you. So hide whatever that is. So if all of a sudden the government came out and said, oh, yeah, by the way, we, we know that we're the ultimate power in the world. Right? We control you. We run your lives. Um, but you're living in a building and we had nothing to do with it. Immediately, the credibility of those governments that made that that thing would would drop. It disappears. Well, yeah, because people would be looking at them, going, "Yeah, so I'll listen to you for the most part, but I really want to talk to those guys <laughs> because those guys are the guys." And there would be again, churches would be founded in in the in the wall's name. I I, I joke about it in different interviews where I said, uh, if people actually found the fence, right, if found the found the wall. There would be churches built right next to the wall, and and be people like we must sacrifice animals for the wall gods, and that would be it. it try try all oh, wall gods. Will you please appear? You know this time, and the and because of that, the government the government knows this, and and they're like, yeah, we're we're not going to tell anybody. We can't. They, they we would lose some control, if not all control. You know, it would be tough tough to come back from that. There'd be too many questions, and the same thing with science. Science, mainstream science would have a tough, tough time recovering from this because then the people would be like, oh, wait, you lied about a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> or you were absolutely wrong about a whole bunch of stuff. So we need more answers and, and yeah, it'd be a mess. So. Yeah, I oh, know. I understand the mess. So what do you think happened and when do you think it happened? People uh, knew the truth. Yeah. The truth. They knew about, you know, where they're living. And then what happened and when did it happen? Right. And they stopped. They changed the narrative. So if you look up, and I'm I'm sure um you you at one point I think didn't you did you talk to Dave Murphy at some point? I did. I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of this stuff will be will be similar, but um so let's say we'll just go back five hundred years, give or take. If you look up on Google, if you type in ancient cosmologies and click on images, right, you'll just see everybody drew the same thing 500 years ago. Everybody drew a snow globe or building or whatever you want to call it. Um, for the most part, because they saw what, you know, when they watched the star, st stars in the sky, and even now, if you watch time lapse of stars in the sky, they all, you know, go, it seems to curve over, you know, some sort of curved surface. And so everybody drew a snow globe with some sort of dome. But... Again, part of the design of this place, which has gotten better over the generations, is that when you introduce the globe model 500 years ago, give or take, with Copernicus, don't forget that just about everybody back then couldn't read and write. So it was a symbol. And so the education, so they, they weren't, the, the population wasn't prepared, wasn't equipped to ask questions. The, you know, they just say you had in the, the first big intellectual movement started coming out and people started, you know, leaning us like, well, they're obviously smarter than we are. Therefore, whatever they say must be true. And if they keep updating it, well, then that must be the new truth. And that's the new truth. And so the globe model put out there very, very subtly at first in big universities, uh, intellectual houses, and then finally down to uh, the junior schools. You know, down to, you know, all the way down to um, six year olds, you know, first grade here. And that's all it took. And then you just keep them there for generation after generation. And you just tell them, it's like, oh, yeah, we used to think the earth was flat. And now here's what it is this little blue and green yeah, toy. Yes, but Mark, why? I mean, I mean, they, they were in control of the whole, you know, population oh, you mean, why, anyway. Why do it? Why, why? Yeah. Why did they feel the need to change the 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 Earth model? Oh yeah. They yeah, were yeah. already in control. I mean, you know, pop if, populations if, were suffering anyway. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. In ignorance. Uh, you. Well, they knew again. The, the very smart people knew that civilization eventually was once once you grew intellectually at you know at the highest levels. Once that filtered down you could actually have more control over the people. You could it, you could fine-tune the population in different directions. However, there were certain things you couldn't leave to chance. And one was, eventually, sooner or later, there runs the risk of people 
finding the edge, right? Finding the, the barrier, the wall, uh, because of the curiosity. We are infinitely curious. It's a mystery. We love, human beings love a mystery. We love solving a mystery. And so if those maps, can, the old maps continued, if you kept showing people snow globes, eventually what would happen is people would be like, yeah, you know what, we, we should, you know, it's a big place, a big world. Eventually people are going to go out there and start looking on their own. So what you do, pretty clever, is you say, oh, no, it's not like a snow globe. It's like an orange or an apple. And there is no fence. Brilliant. You tell people there's no fence, and you, and then you show them a globe. It's like, look, you go round and round and round and round. You're never going to find a fence. Yeah. There is no fence. You keep telling them that over and over, generation after generation. And then finally, when the gasoline engine comes out, no one's looking for it. No one even cares. And they also had the benefit, luckily for them, that Antarctica was so hostile to human conditions. I mean, it just screams, go away. It's way higher than it than all the other continents. It's just snow and ice. There's nothing to eat. It's just awful. It's just an awful, awful place. And so that it, they creating the globe solved a very big problem, which was eventually you, you, you kill the mystery entirely. Because if you don't, eventually people, anyone that's holding a, you know, a little model in their hands, I've got one over there, would be like, it's like, I wonder what's out there. I wonder what's out there. You just knock that off the table. It's gone. And 99.9% .9 of the people don't even look, don't even care. And to this day, I mean, you know, you make it cost prohibitive. If you want to go down to an Antarctica, or I'm sorry, out to Antarctica, uh, I don't know what what it is in Greece currencies, but in American dollars, I mean, it's pushing fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars to do what? To freeze your ass off? No, it's a terrible idea. Nobody wants to go there. Everybody yeah. then tell people it's like, no, it's it's greater. It's better to go to Santorini. <laughs> it's better to go to the Bahamas. <laughs> go there. So basically, if I understood you correctly, you're saying that eventually people would have the technology to go and and look for yeah. the edge. Yeah. So preemptively, yeah. they they created a, a, a different model. There's no edge. So yep. your technology, you don't need to use it. Absolutely. Same <laughs> thing, hap same happen yeah. thing happened with the moon, which was, don't forget that NASA is a collection of parts. NASA doesn't make their own parts. They get all their, all their parts no. for all their, their stuff from the military contractors. General Dynamics, yeah. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, yeah. those guys. Well... You, you start going to the moon back and back and forth and get, the plan worked, which was you go there and then like multiple times, bah, 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 go to the moon. Nobody else goes. And then in 1972, it's like, well, we've got really nothing else to, to, to do there or, or we're calling it quits. Good night, everybody. And we roll credits and that's it. Nobody ever goes again. And no, but, and again, quietly behind the scenes, you tell the other nations not to do anything. It's mutually assured destruction. Like a lot of people will ask, well, why didn't the Russians, you know, go to the moon? It's like, well, because they can't. It's at the highest level. You you can't you can't let that happen. So you by you, by the, by the Americans coming back and shutting the whole program down, you kept most people from even talking about it for decades, because you don't want General Dynamics teaming up with I don't know Coca Cola. To, to be like, yeah, we're going to put a banner on the moon, a big Coca-Cola, which you know we would do. And they didn't. And I, well, another one, real quick, would be the, um, do you remember the Tesla Roadster in space? You know, that red convertible that supposedly went to space? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You put it up there and you spin it around. And again, there was nothing up there. And then that was it. And yet you never saw that. It, it was the first car ever in space. It was never in any of the dealerships. Those banners weren't anywhere. No other car company even attempted to do such a thing. And you kind of diffuse the situation. It's, you know, you, you get ahead of it. And that's what they've always done. And it's worked for a long time. Okay. The Tesla thing was ridiculous. It was I ridiculous. mean, even more in ridiculous. <laughs> and and, and yeah. they... They didn't get away with it. What's changed between now and then is because of social media and all the high-speed algorithms you can run, you can check reactions in real time. You don't have to wait till somebody posts. You can just watch hashtags. Bup, 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 bup. You can see if they're buying it or not, which is why they're very careful. Uh, I enjoyed the fact – a lot of people didn't catch this, which was that there were no logos on that Roadster in space. You know, it's Tesla and SpaceX. That thing should have been wall-to-wall -wall advertising on it, 
right? Just nothing but huge amounts of, of, uh, of stickers and logos. No logos anywhere. In fact, if you were just coming from the outside, you have, it's like a red car. Whose is it? And who yes. launched, right? And I said that, I go, I go, this is America. I go, we're all about advertising. I go, all you have to do, I, hell, you, you could have Disney finance the whole thing. It was like one mannequin, right? It, you could have used their four-seater and put in, I don't know, a Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Groot, and Iron Man, and the thing would have paid for itself. It would have been the most amazing advertising ever. And yet they just ran, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to circle the Earth, and then we're going to head to Mars. And the second they headed towards Mars, they cut transmission. And I'm going, why'd you turn off transmission? Well, what, what, you mean, wouldn't that have been great? You point at the Earth, and it's like you get to see the Earth. And went, no, because that's not not allowed. You're not allowed to show the Earth going off into the distance. It's never happened in the history of space travel. So, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question, different um, question yeah. about um, religions and religions and churches. Yeah. You say that if they they're craving to find, um, you know, a supernatural ar artifact. The Holy Grail. The, right. Why you say that? What what would change if um, if they had? Uh, if any one church finds a holy uh, actual artifact? Yeah, I I imagine that the different religions have uh, different sacred uh, right, right, know, right, right. supernatural artifacts. Why are they craving for them? Why if they existed, they would have found them. They would have done everything in their powers to find them. Uh, well, the, the big reason why is you need to establish, which is, again, it's contradictory to what the government wants, because the government, uh, so we'll use the Indiana Jones Holy Grail argument, which is the Holy Grail, a very famous, you know, that held the, the, uh, the tablets, you know, the Ten Commandments. If that had the powers that it said it w it, it could, well, one, it'd be too dangerous to be let in public. But let's say it would just, you know, gave off a, a glowy light and things could levitate. Something, something benign, something, you know, innocent. That would reinforce your religion. Because remember, everybody, you've, you've heard of like leaps of faith and, and, well, faith in general. You know, people that, that are in organized religion, they always dream and fantasize about the you know the supernatural aspects that are tied to their religion in some way you know they've all heard the stories you know be it um, hinduism buddhism judaism islam christianity it doesn't really matter they've all got them they've all got their supernatural stories and if you could have some physical object that could reinforce that you would be hands heads heads and shoulders above the your competition no question uh, just because people want to see it, you know, it, it helps, it makes it more real. You know what I mean? Even again, if even if something as simple as, you know, uh, 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 a, a you know, a device that could levitate things with a glowy sound and, you know, sounds of angels overhead, you know, oh, if it even something as that people, people would flock. I mean, you've seen people, especially in the Catholic religion, you know, there's, if, if, a if a stain on a wall looks like Jesus on the cross or Mary, People will come from all over the place, absolutely all over the place to, to, you know, to sit and watch and pray and, you know, look for a sign. People are looking for signs all the time. You give them a real one, oh, oh it's a game changer, no question. And how all that argument relates to the dome? Why is this argument in your documentary? Oh, I'm trying to remember why I put that in there. Uh, same thing. Well, no, the same thing applies to the dome uh, or any aspect of the dome because it's outside of our capabilities. So if you have an object, let's say it's just the wall of the dome, right? And that, that wall is impenetrable, right? Nothing, nothing is outside of, you know, everything can be broken. We create things and we destroy things. Nothing is indestructible in our world. Nothing. Right. If even worst case scenario, which is why we tried it, you can take an atomic weapon, put it next to whatever object that is. That object is gone. But all of a sudden now you have something. It's like, yeah, put an atomic weapon over there. OK, that's a problem because that that object's still there. Well, that object now instantly becomes magical instantly. Uh, it is it doesn't matter what what scientifically, you know, analyzed as the general public will see it as 
straight up magic, uh, which has talk, been talked about in different things over the years, which is so technology. it's in their benefit. The what? Oh, well, only only it's if you in... can. It you're you're right. I'll use the pyramids as an example. Pyramids is a great example of this. Pyramids was an aspect was that could work. The dome is not, and I'll explain. So I do not sorry, believe. Sorry, say that again. I didn't follow. Oh, Could sorry. The, the, that, the, uh, okay. the last sentence. Say it again. Sure. So the pyramids, the, pyramids. The, the Egyptian pyramids are yes. a great example of how to take something that wasn't yours and use it for your benefit. So okay. meaning there is not a single hieroglyph regarding the pyramids that shows the construction of the pyramids. Most of the people that, you know, in the know realized that at some point the pyramids were built probably by a much, much older civilization. And then the pharaohs came along and found it, right? Well, what do you think you're going to do, right? You, you, you find these fantastic pyramids in the middle of the desert and you're like, so no one's here. Yeah, we built that. And instantly you become and then it's like oh yeah we're, that lion over there yeah carve that head down and make it look like me and you have the sphinx right and you instantly become elevated this is like and and whoever you bring into your city around that i mean if you've ever spent have you ever been to cairo i haven't uh if you go no. you'd understand you the, the the pyramids you look at the pictures and it looks like the pictures are in the middle of the desert they are not the desert is on one side, and on the other side, literally the parking lots back right up to the pyramids. I mean, there's a Starbucks within, you know, a few hundred yards of the, of the pyramids, right? Cairo is behind you, and Cairo is not a beautiful city. It is not. It is. Oh, it's a mess. And you look at that, and you look at the pyramids, you're going, yeah, you guys have nothing to do with this at all, right? <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I'm not picking on the Egyptians, but you realize that because the engineering. The same you can say with um, the same you can say with us, you know, the Greeks and uh, the Parthenon. Now, uh, Athens. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. The Greeks, the Greeks have a long-standing tradition. No, no, no one's going to mess with the Greeks. No, but the Egyptians. The Egyptians also have a, a very old uh, history. They, they do, they do, but a lot of it is based on. A lot of it really comes down to the the core, which was the the pyramids. One, if you have those objects, uh, it really lends this massive credibility to your to the stature of your civilization. Um, it was kind of like the Native Americans. I love the little side story. Um, the Native Americans over here in the United States finally surrendered as a group because they took some of the chiefs to Washington D.C. And there were things, you know, some of the, the giant memorials were there. These huge things made out of stone. And the Indians did not understand until they got there. And it's like, yeah, if they can build this, we have no chance. <laughs> and they did. And they just said, we're, we're done. You know, up until that point, they had just seen soldiers and guns. But they really just saw men. Until you saw what men could build, you really didn't understand the scope of it. Um, so, sorry. So, the Egyptians, let, let's use that. So, the Egyptians, that worked for them. There's nothing we can do to I, i've thought of this over and over which is there's nothing let's just pick on the american government american government can't come up with a good enough story to make it seem like we had anything to do with the building of the dome it opens up a series of questions which so with too many loose threads they cannot be answered and so their their ultimate their ultimate argument in the end would be to like look it's just not there we're not even going to discuss the dome the dome's not there there is no dome uh, a smaller version of that would be the stars, why there were never any stars in the American photographs on the moon, which is every every shot you ever see of the Americans on the moon, it's just black, absolutely perfectly black. And you're saying, well, okay, what's the point? My point is, why didn't they put in stars? The reason why they didn't put in stars is, is because mathematically it was too tough to keep everything in order, meaning – some nerd somewhere is going to look and say, say, oh, yeah, the belt of Orion's over there, right? And the, it's everything's time and date stamped. They're going to look and they're going to go, that belt of Orion shouldn't be there. It should be over there. Why is it over there? Right? And there's too many questions. And, and the government was not prepared to answer those questions. Can't. There's nothing you can do. And so they said, yeah, no stars. No stars ever. Ever, ever, ever. We're not going to any stars. Same thing with the wall, the dome. You can't. There's... I, I've tried. I'm a fairly creative problem solver, and I like good writing. But there is there isn't a story out there that you could, um, which is again why the Egyptians, uh, you know, they they said, oh yeah, we built it. How'd you build it? What? 
Next question, right? They they just defer. Man, nope. Seriously, I, I haven't I haven't uh, searched, so I you know, I have to ask you. What? There are no writings. There, there are no documentation for the Egyptians building uh, pyramids. Right. There's no documentation ever anywhere. No. Ever discovered. No, 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 never, ever. It's one of the greatest. It's one of the greatest inside jokes of all time. Which is not only do you um, the Stephen Wright, the comedian, had a great joke, which was, uh, it's not even just who built, you know, how it was built. It's like who financed it. You're talking about the amount of money that it would take just to build something like that. I mean, the 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 labor force. I mean, yeah, you could have slave labor all you wanted. But the and and to what end? You know, the, the, we're still trying to figure out exactly, you know, of course, you dig some holes in it and you bury some pharaohs, but that's not why they're there. Plus, oh, I'll throw out one more at you, which is the missing capstones. That's the part that yeah. blows me away. People that when when you go and look at the pyramids, there's two things that are missing. One is when they were originally, you know, there, they were completely smooth on the side. There weren't these steps. They were completely encased in white, white marble, just apparently gorgeous and blinding in the sun, absolutely blinding. But the other thing was they had these capstones. There is no record of the capstones. By the time Napoleon got there and the other groups, you know, long after Egypt, whatever the capstones were made of, there is no nothing. They're just gone. All three of them gone. And even if there was a, you know, even let's say they were made of solid gold, right? There would have been a story of them being melted down. There would have been some myth, some legend. I mean, the, the, the Egyptian pyramids are so amazingly old compared to us. And they hold a story that hopefully one day, if I ever get my time travel machine working, I'm going there first. I want to see what's happening. You know what, what I would do if I had a time travel machine? I would go back, just to confirm, I would go back like 50 years before the pharaohs showed up. And I would I would be sitting there in the desert with the pyramids and just no the desert all the way around, nobody there. And I go, yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> These things are way, <laughs> way older. Maybe it wasn't a desert back then. Who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. That that the, sorry, let's throw one one more thing. Why was there a giant statue? Forget about the Sphinx. Why was there a giant statue of a lion there? Lions live in a savanna, they don't live in the desert, which means the whole climate was different. Oh yeah. Yeah, this yeah. world is not yeah. as advertised by any stretch. No, definitely not. Okay, another question. Yeah. Why do why do the governments care if they acknowledge? Yeah, there is a dome. A supernatural entity did it. God did it. Not a different civilization. So there's right. no one above us. Right. On this plane, we are still, uh, you know, we still hold the the power. God made it. It's a religious thing. So. Why, why hide? What's wrong, why, what's wrong with that argument? Why hide God? Well, um, the, the reason why you hide God. I understand your argument that if, yeah. uh, you know, uh, higher beings uh, build the dome, then our, our governments would be, you know, who cares about you? I mean, they're more advanced uh, people above you. We don't care about you. This argument I get. But if they if they uh, acknowledge that God made uh, made this uh, plane, uh, God made the dome. We're still the elites, you know. We still go govern this plane. Uh, it, what? There's 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 something here in the, the United States called church versus state, which okay. is for whatever reason. The governments don't like, even, you know, even though we've got it on our money and God we trust, it's kind of funny because in, we don't mention it a lot. We don't mention a lot of chapter and verse. The media doesn't cover God. It does has nothing to do with the institution of science. They're, they're completely at odds with each other. Science and God cannot exist in the same room because science is trying to define the world as we know it without using a deity and religion is trying to use it saying it's all the deity you know it's, sci it's science is like oh yeah yeah that you're just you're just putting names on things that god built yes. uh it's part of the design and it, it, and of course acknowledging again i think it's part we'll, we'll go back to babel with you know the story of babel where uh you know god took the the civilization and broke them up into different languages and scattered them it's like all right you guys are never getting together ever well 
the same thing is is true today. I mean, you've got five major religious houses which control eighty now anyway, that control eighty percent of the population, and several of them have been in different forms of war forever, right? So, if that's the case, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but what when you say, yeah, the government could come out and say, oh yeah, by the way, God built this, right? Really? Which God? Because, and, and, and as much as, and I'm not picking on religion here, because the, in the end, I, I kind of treat it like a horse race. Whosoever God shows up first wins. So whoever you're betting on, it better be the right one, because otherwise you're going to have a really bad day when, when it happens. And so, yeah, the, the government just can't, can't. They'd, I think some of them would like to, but there's too much that the government tries to be God in certain areas. You know, it's like put your trust in the government where there's nothing higher than God we trust. But that's on an ethereal level. Physically, we're the top dog. And they I mean, they they just don't want to give that up. You know, why? Why diminish it if you don't have to? And it's it's a slippery slope. Uh, you know, once once you go down there, you, you never really want to revisit it. Um, let me throw one more out at you, which is, uh, and you know full well, their their um their abilities are far beyond our planes, far far beyond our planes. Well, the, the, which is why the Air Force, like the United States Air Force, will never fully acknowledge them because you can't because it it, it diminishes their their military power. You can't you can't rule the skies if you don't rule the skies. So you you know you you say oh it's an anomaly here whatever you just you just kind of blow off the questions anyway sorry I, I ramble okay right. we're back yeah we're back you yeah. uh, we were discussing why governments uh, we don't want to say that that God made them um, uh, the dome because right. you know who's God you were saying <laughs> yeah 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 who's yeah, who's God um they governments don't like giving up concrete authority for them religion well you've heard the, the term uh religion is just the opiate for the masses right the government believes that very very much so so for them religious is fine they'll go to church but the government is not going to defer to god they're, they're just not uh which is why there's this weird relationship between church and state you know the power you know like everybody knows the power of the Vatican, but the Vatican isn't everywhere. You know what I mean? Every country doesn't have a Vatican. There's very small centralized um, religious cores of power, but there's governments everywhere. I mean, the government, our government here, for example, is so bloated that we have more employees than I think half of the world's, half of the world's populations in some ways. We've got huge amounts of employees. In, in our in our government it's just it they basically just government is just an extension of power and they don't like giving it up so they're not gonna yeah, they're not gonna acknowledge god yeah you know, publicly I, I i believe that um nowadays religions churches um yeah. have surrendered uh themselves to to government they have merged with government now it's uh, one message either if it's coming from the government or if it's coming from uh, you know the church it it's has tended to well a lot of that's part of it is technology it's been very uh, subtle in that tech you know because churches now broadcast through technology you know more and more technology over the years first it was just television tv evangelists and now there are church services that are streaming uh, on a regular basis and so it what's the difference between you know, and the government is also streaming, doing their thing. So everything's kind of blended. It's becoming more, you know, everything mixed together. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, it has, in a lot of cases, turned to that. And it's making it harder to di differentiate, you know, the, the lines between the two. Yeah. Okay. And um, I think I have um, one last question. Unless I'm... Oh, yes. Uh, volcanoes. Volcanoes. <laughs> okay. Please talk to me about volcanoes. What's going on? <laughs> Volcanoes, no, that was by far, uh, early on anyway, the, the clue that I got the most uh, criticism on. Pushback. from yes. Yeah, I got the most pushback on. 
because it was something that people and I knew I was onto something because people it's something people don't really think about, but it was tied to the uh, the diagram of the Earth that we're all shown. Uh, in fact, it's interesting because I started I really was I really kind of wanted to delve more into the volcanoes thing, but people really started being drawn to what was under the volcanoes, which was the you know the deepest holes ever drilled. And so what I was trying to tell people there is, is that if this place is mechanical in nature, you know, meaning we're in a building, no different than if, if you have, um, I don't know if you keep pets over there, like desert pets, like tarantulas or lizards or whatever in, in desert. Okay. Well, we do. We're weird. So, you know, you, it, it's like an aquarium, only it's set up for a desert. So it's same glass housing. There's no water in it. There's just sand and rocks and you put a heat lamp on it. And the, the point is, is that everything in that terrain, terrarium is absolutely artificial. You control absolutely everything. So when it comes to things like volcanoes, it's just something that people don't like letting go of, which is people say, okay, well, maybe the water is artificial. You know, everything's artificial, but not the volcanoes. They're just unpredictable. I'm going, why would they, why would they be artificial? Why would you leave that to chance? Why, you know, volcanoes are, you know, horrible and violent and nobody should be living next to them. <laughs> Let's not talk about Pompeii right, and those other guys. Just like, oh, yeah, let's build a city right underneath a volcano. That's a great idea. Um, we've got a volcano here in the United States, uh, a super volcano near a place called Yellowstone that's yeah. underground, right? And everyone's talking about, oh, if a super volcano ever goes off, everybody's in trouble. The United States is going to die and Europe's going to be covered in ash. It's going to be awful. And I like to point out, it's like, well, why would you ever leave that to chance? Why would you, I mean... If this place is mechanical, then a super volcano is off the table, meaning everything can be controlled. Volcanoes don't seem like they can be controlled just because we can't control them. It's like, no, I mean, if there's a molten system underneath here, why couldn't it be controlled at, at a certain level? Um, no different than plate tectonics. And, and by that, I mean, if general science can't drill down, you guys still use kilometers. You're, you're the metric system, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. fine. 12, if you can't drill down more than 12 kilometers, then how can you say that there's 4,000 miles, uh, six, 7,000 kilometers down to the center of the earth when you can't even drill 12, right? And not only that, but you're showing us exactly what it looks like down there. These perfect two, 1,500 mile, 1,500 kilometer bands of red and orange and yellow and white, right? You know, all the way down. It's like, how, how are you showing this, you know? And when you look in different periodicals or even Wikipedia, you look and, and um, they say in the fine print, yeah, we have absolutely no idea what's down there. <laughs> we, we, we're extrapolating from volcanoes. We're just taking a guess. We're saying, okay, we're starting with volcanoes and we dig down a little bit there. And then the other 6,000 kilometers, uh, that's pretty much our best guess. But they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, no, this is what it is. That's the part that drives is always driven me nuts about science, which is they make statements and they put their stamp of approval on it and they never apologize if they're wrong. They no. just say, well, no, this is the new definition. It used to be this. Now it's this. And kind of like with flat earth, which is like, it used to be a snow globe. Now it's an apple. I was like, okay, I, I guess. And, and we, we take their word for it because, well, they're obviously very intelligent people. And experts, um, but, yes, they know. Yeah. So anyway, volcanoes, that was just something I threw in there. And it was just, it was like a couple lines. I go, look, we can melt rock. We can do this on a very small scale. I, and I kind of, I, it was kind of tongue in cheek when I said it, but I meant it, which was, I go, look, what do you think cars are made out of? I go, you have to do a lot of mining. You mine it, you melt it, and you form it. We can, you know, we just do it on a very, very small scale. And there are some steel mills that are very, very large out there I mean, by our standards. But when we start thinking of something bigger than that, we have a problem with it. It's like, well, if we can't build it, then it can't be real. I'm going, well, that's a bit arrogant. I mean, um, let me throw one more out at you. Um, something that science does, which drives, you ever heard of a term called um, cryptozoology? That name ever? No. Okay, so cryptozoology, look into this if you get a chance, which is, Animals that people have say they've discovered, but science has said they're not real. Because until you drag one into a laboratory, science will never believe you. And I mean, we're going back to like, um, uh, I'll give you three quick examples. One, the giant panda. Myth. 
absolutely a myth. Science just laughed at people saying, okay, so there's a black and white bear. It only eats bamboo. It's really slow. And and it's out there, right? It's only like one part of the world. And, and, and people are like, yeah, yeah. It's like, no. Uh, the giant anaconda. Never thought there were a giant anaconda snakes out there. Uh, the giant squid. Great example. We will never catch a giant squid. They're way too fast, way too strong. I mean, they are the ultimate predator in the ocean. The only reason we know they exist at all is because the um, they fight with sperm whales every once in a while, and some of their uh, their uh, tentacles and crap, you know, they, they've got remnants. One, we found beaks inside of sperm whales, but some of their tentacle marks were on the outside of whales because we whale hunted, right? Um, but my favorite was, uh, if you ever get a chance, look up something called the uh, the coelacanth fish. C-O-E-L, C-L-A-C-A-N-T-H, coelacanth fish, C-O-E-L. Anyway, it's a really ugly fish with a bunch of extra fins, right? And you, uh, not that long ago, they scientists found fossils of this thing, right? It's like, oh, it's a coelacanth. It's been dead for at least 70 million years. Like, oh, okay. And every, every single scientist would have bet their, the, everything on it, every m amount of money they had. Well, then the British government caught one off of uh, the coast of um, South Africa, and then another one off of Mozambique, and then another one off of Madagascar. And pretty soon they realized all of Africa's got these things flimmer around them. Well, that's kind of a problem. How, and it took years before before scientists would even acknowledge this. It's like, well, it's got to be wrong. It's like, what are you talking about? It was the British Navy that found it. It wasn't just some fisherman. Uh, you know, you guys, you know, an, an arm of science found this. And so what's your point? My point is, is that when people talk, and so it's real, and, and they had to re, you know, so now they're saying um, it's a living fossil. It's in an evolutionary state of stasis, meaning it's not evolving. It's like, oh, okay. So my question is this, um, you've heard of like the Loch Ness Monster for this yeah. term? Okay, Loch Ness Monster. Are there aquatic dinosaurs swimming around the really deep lakes of England, right? Scotland. And you're going to say no. Aquatic dinosaurs. Aquatic dinosaurs. <laughs> well, it, well, plesiosaurs, right? But if that's what they are. I mean, they're basically dinosaur fish things. They breathe, right? They're like whales. And it's like, are there are there some swimming in the deep lakes of Scotland? And you say, well, no. It's like, why not? Well, because they've been dead for at least a hundred million years. Oh, you mean like that fish over there? That fish over off of Africa that you caught that you said it was like. So you were wrong about that. A seventy million year old fish, but no way could there be anything else that could have survived possibly. Just that fish. It's just a one fish. You know, nothing else. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're less sure now. No, I absolutely believe in the Loch Ness monster. Absolutely, I do. I think there's there's things out there. Why wouldn't there be? I mean, yeah, there's not birds, you know, big reptile birds flying around, but in the oceans, why the hell not? Ha something had to have survived some of the previous civilizations, and that would be a great little nugget of mystery out there because we love them. Anyway, mm. great. Um, okay, and um, leave us with um, with this. Yeah. Why are you so convinced as much? You know, as you can be, that this is um, a mechanical place uh, built by someone. I, the reason why I believe, and, it, and by the way, it wasn't a rock sure belief when I first started this thing. As time went on and more and more people, I couldn't have done this on my own. No, but I mean, Dave Murphy came along and David Weiss and Globusters and Jaren and all these guys started making content. And I started getting so many people were contacting me with little aspects. It was all the little touches, meaning one of the reasons I, how I qualify conspiracies is because, again, I consider myself a, a pretty clever problem solver. Could I improve? Or could I come up with, with similar ways of, of doing it, whatever it was? So when I looked at Flat Earth, I was literally building it in my head and looking at the design and saying, okay, if I wanted to do this or this, how would I design it? Where are the little features I would put and, and, how, and how would I – and why are, why are things the way they are? And I noticed that there are design features in this place that cannot be coincidental. Can't, there's too many, you know, well, you, you you may have heard the term, term uh, the first time is happenstance, the second time is a coincidence, the third time is enemy action. 
meaning it's deliberate. If you run into too many coincidences, they're just not. I, I consider it a coincidence when you run into a, a friend of yours at the airport <laughs> in line. Hey, it's like, oh, hey, look at that. We're both at the airport at the same time. That's a coincidence. Everything else is probably deliberate uh, on, a, on a mass scale. So look at things like um, the ocean, for example. The ocean is only 3% salt. But just that 3% salt solution limits exploration by 90-something percent, meaning you can't drink the water that your ships are sailing on, and that was the limitation of most explorations, which is like when you start running out of fresh water, you were screwed. You, once you get to that halfway point, you had to turn around or go for broke. And so, so many explorations were, it slowed things down. Um, uh, the air that we're breathing in right now is only 99% transparent, for example. When you look off into the distance, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker, which is why you can't, why you can't see forever, which is like people say, well, why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest place in the world. It's like, well, because it's too, it, we're, we're, there's a thickness to the atmosphere. Uh, Antarctica. And the limit to our vision. We don't have unlimited vision. Limit, yeah, yeah, unlim yeah. Limit to our vision. Absolutely. And, and and that has only changed very, very recently. HD technology, without HD technology, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. No, Meaning no. once once people got the HD cameras and they started zooming out into boats, I didn't tell people to do this, by the way. If you watch the clues, you realize that yeah, yeah. No point in the clues that I tell people, hey, run to the beach and start shooting, you know, looking at things long distance. People did that on their own. And, and they started calling me saying, oh, hey, by the way, I can see a boat out at 40 miles. I'm going, and? And it's like, well, I shouldn't be able to see it. I go, why? <laughs> and then they would start. I didn't know what the formula, the, the curvature of the earth was. And it's just there's so many little wrinkles like that, which is if you're trying to build a place like this, those are, are, are aspects you would put in, including, by the way, Antarctica. Antarctica is by far the most deliberate and very clever piece of engineering in that it's very very cold think about this back in the old days right the scariest thing for any person in a boat is an iceberg by far every every sailor it's like yeah icebergs we're, we're going the other way right let's say you go past the icebergs and you make it to the shoreline which is mostly just ice and snow and ice and snow straight up almost all, all the way around oh crap you're frozen again aren't you shoot what was I uh, saying? Sorry. Um, Sorry. What were you saying? Um, what were you saying? What did I ask oh, you? The design, the design aspects of the world. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. everything and I about... think I think I I know what you mean. Yeah. It's designed so that we don't find we can't find the dome, so that yeah. we it's designed to contain us and keep us, you know, away from our borders. Right. Right. Antarctica and, is too cold. You know, it's too dark. It's uh, yeah. icebergs. And and no it and it makes it the clever part about it is it's not overt. Meaning, you make the decision on your own. You go to Antarctica, and eventually you're like, yeah, this is horrible. I'm turning around, and it's your decision. You know, it's not like you get there and there's a big sign that says "Go back," <laughs> right? Because then people, what do you think people do? It's like, oh yeah, we're staying right here. You know, people, we, we go back on our own, so it works. It's, it's, and I think it's running out though. I think, I think our governments have figured it out some time ago and the general population is, is waking up. Uh, I'm hoping that whoever built this place or at least the superintendents, I think, I don't think that flat earth is, is the end all be all of everything. I think we are the picture frame for a canvas we haven't seen yet. And uh, that's what I'm hoping that, that eventually happens is that some were introduced Oh crap! Are you frozen again? No, no, no! I'm not frozen. Oh good. <laughs> you, you, when you sit still I'm a Greek sometimes. I you, Mark. <laughs> when you sit still sometimes, I can't tell because you literally don't move. You fooled me there. That's if I did one of these. I would. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, I I believe I, I my hope is that eventually whoever built this place will come in and take the credit. That's that's what I'm hoping. Okay. Well, let's see. Who knows? Honestly, who knows? No, nobody knows. It's me. I mean, considering what's happened over the last three, four years, it would not surprise me at all. No, definitely not. No. All right. Uh, extremely interesting um, stuff <laughs> there. <laughs> okay. I try. <laughs>
yeah, is, yeah. There, is there anything else I can do for you? Um, no, I, I, I pretty much, I think I'm, I'm, I got the picture. Okay. Yeah, I got the picture. I, I, I see what you mean. I, I see where you're coming from. I understand. Yeah. It, take, it takes a while. You know, I've been doing this for seven years and I still don't have, you know, all, all the answers, obviously. But it is a yes. fascinating, it is a fascinating uh, thought, you know, to, and, and a set of ideas to go into. Uh, and uh, it, it opened up a lot of things for me. The, the one good thing I can say, you know, by getting into this is that it opened up my mind for everything else. You know, now there, there's literally no concept I will sneer at. You know, people can bring up anything they want to me. And beforehand, I'll be like, get the hell out of here. Now I'll be like, yeah, you know what? I'll Let's look couple, into this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll give you a couple minutes. It may be the most ridiculous thing ever. But, I mean, I'll give you one quick one, um, which is uh, a year after getting to Flat Earth, somebody came to me and they said, yeah, by the way, the moon is uh, cold. And I go... I don't even know what that means. What are you talking about? Is it colder at night? It's like, that's pretty obvious. It's like, no, man, it's generating a cold, a cold laser light. I'm going, what? what? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. And, and they, seriously, I was one of the first people to get talked to about this. And it's like, yeah, get a point and click thermometer and start clicking on moon shadow and moon. And, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it started working. I'm going, wait a minute. And, but again, I made fun of that guy for like the first five minutes. <laughs> and, and then finally I'm like, now I, I, I I don't even remember who it was. Yeah, it's measurable. Yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely measurable. So now, yeah, no, there's nothing I make fun of anymore. Nothing. <laughs> Definitely. All right. It's been a ride. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Mark, you. very much. Thank you. If you, if you need much. anything else, by the way, uh, feel free to, uh, um, you can email me with any, if you need any links or any specific examples of videos. If I don't know it, I can at least direct you to the to the place you, you need to be. Yeah, sure. I will. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Please stay for one more minute. Um, sure. After I stop the recording, for everybody else, um, goodbye and uh, see you again. <laughs> okay.